Welcome to the rendering for a CATIA tutorial. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to adjust material properties and a few other quick tips to help make your renderings look more realistic. Let's go ahead and open up our children's block product. In this product, we have a children's block already assembled. We have already added a cylindrical environment and added walls, added a floor and a carpet like material, added a few lights and changed their intensity, and added a camera angle. To start off, we want to make sure our rendering style is in perspective. To do this, let's go to View, Rendering Style, and change it to Perspective. This makes the angles less blocky, making the object look more realistic. However, sometimes it can be beneficial to leave it in parallel. To start off, let's go to our camera angle and do an initial rendering to see Katia's default settings. As you can see, Katia's default settings are really good. However, we can adjust a few of the material properties to make it look more realistic. To start off, let's go to the plexiglass block. Double click on the plexiglass. By doing this, this will bring up the rendering properties. There are two tabs, lighting and texture. For the plexiglass block, we'll be working with a lighting tab. There are seven options here that allow you to change the rendering characteristics. As you could have seen from the initial rendering, the block was kind of dark and could have been a little bit more transparent. Let's go ahead and adjust the ambient option. By adjusting the ambient option, this allows you to adjust the intensity being reflected off sources that do not have a light source directly shining on them. In a similar manner, the diffuse option allows you to increase the intensity of surfaces that are being shined on directly by a light source. Next, let's go ahead and adjust the roughness coefficient. By increasing the coefficient, it allows you to make the surface more dull. And finally, let's go ahead and adjust the transparency. When you are done selecting values, click Apply and Close. Let's do another rendering. I like the rendering options I chose to change for this block. If you want, you can spend even more time to make it look more realistic. Next, let's go ahead and change the marble properties for this circle. By single clicking on the marble, it brings up this box and a compass. By selecting on one of the corners and dragging, you can change the scale of the marble by increasing or decreasing it. Also, you can change the starting location of the pattern by clicking on one of the pieces of the compass and dragging it. If you want more properties, you can double click on the Italian marble. This will bring up the rendering properties as it did before. I like Katia's default lighting settings, so let's go ahead and just go to texture. Here again, you can change the material size. You can also change the material size using the scale on the U and the scale on the V. You can also change the starting location of the pattern as you did with the compass using position V and position U. However, for this application, we're just going to adjust the bump. We want to add a bump pattern to about a 0.5. By adding a bump pattern, this adds shaders to the material, which make it look as if a texture has been added. Let's click Apply and Close. Let's do another rendering. This looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do this for the green marble square. Let's double click on the green square. Let's go ahead and adjust the material size here. And finally add a bump pattern. Let's do another rendering. The marbles and the plexiglass block look really good together. Now to finish off this rendering, let's go ahead and adjust the material properties for this gold triangle and the aluminum ellipse. Let's go to the aluminum ellipse. By double clicking on the aluminum, it brings up the rendering properties option. Let's go to texture and add a brushed aluminum texture. To do this, let's go to image, browse for image. Here it brings up our file where we've already downloaded a brushed aluminum picture off the internet and saved it as a JPEG file. Let's go ahead and add that. As you can see, it doesn't look like much has changed to our object. This is because under the lighting tab, 
the reflectivity is a set above a point 2. If you change it down to a point 2, you can see that the image has been changed. However, while rendering, it doesn't matter where your reflectivity is, it'll still show up. Let's go back to our texture and add a bump pattern to about a point 1. Click apply and close. Let's do another rendering. In this rendering, the ellipse is still pretty grainy. I think this is because the scale is too big. If you want to go back, you can adjust the scale to make this look more realistic. To finish off, let's go ahead and adjust the gold triangle. If I double click on the gold, we'll bring up our properties again. Under texture, let's add an image. We've already searched on the internet for a polished gold and saved it as a JPEG. Let's add our JPEG. Next to the image type, there's a mapping function that allows you to change how the picture is added to the object. Let's change this to planar and also increase our bump to run a point 1. From a few of the other renderings we've already done, I would notice that the gold triangle in the back was pretty dark, so let's increase the intensity of our ambient and diffuse functions. Click apply. Okay, let's do our final rendering. By changing these few rendering options, it makes this final rendering look a lot more realistic than CATIA's default settings. And this concludes the rendering for CATIA tutorial.